Okay, welcome to the fifth and final video of the week. Um, in this video we're going to be looking at how to deal with deeply nested objects. So I've picked a really nasty, horrible object that's um, been imported from a web API and we're going to kind of go through some of the techniques that you'll be able to use to extract the deeply listed data into a nice, easy to work with data frame. So to start off with, you might want to download the RDS file using this link. It's going to be a lot easier if you can kind of follow along one slide at a time and try and run the functions and analysis in your own R session as we go to try and understand what's going on. So step one, let's just read in the data. You may need to use a slightly different path in your read underscore RDS function, depending on where you put the data on your computer. And the first thing I want to do is work out what type of object this is. And I can use the class function to operate on that object that we've loaded in um, to tell me something about it. And if you see, it returns the class response response is a class of object you may well not be familiar with and so normally if I, you're doing this for the first time you'd probably spend a little bit of time searching to work out what the right tools what the right packages are to deal with this um, type of object um, we have a little bit of a head start because we know that this is an object from a web a api and there's some really nice tools in our studio in the hitter package that we can use to extract information from these objects that are deeply nested that you typically get returned from HTML type calls. So we're going to load in the hitter library and use a function called content um, to extract a slightly cleaner version of the result object that we can work with in R. When we run the class function on the content object, you'll see it returns an object of class list. So again, something that we're a little bit more familiar with. And we're not quite at a data frame yet, but we definitely know now that we have some tools in our arsenal to start working with this list object. So I'm just going to quickly run through those first steps in my R session. Just clean this up a little bit for you. So first of all, I'm just going to load in the data using the readr package, return the class of that object to that response object. You can take a look at that in your environment. You can see there's a lot going on here. It's a really complicated, deeply listed object. So we'll spend some time in the next few minutes extracting all the useful information. Our first step using the hitter package is to use the content function and turn that into something that looks a little bit more usable, which in our case is going to be a list. You can see we've now created an object of type list in your environment. You can click on that. You can see down here a little preview of what that looks like. A little bit nicer. You can see that there's still lists in here. There's something called data. And it's got 200. 88 objects in it. You can open that up a little bit further in preview and you can see within those 288 objects, those objects are also lists. Open up one of those lists. You'll see that inside each list there's something which is a character class, something which is a double, but also two more objects which are still a class list. So the next step we want to do is to start trying to make it look a little bit more like a data frame. So to do that, we're going to use the table package and convert the object content to something that's a little bit closer to the final data frame. So let's go back to our R session, add the table package, run the as underscore table function on our content object. And if we just take a quick preview of that, you can see now it is a data frame. It has 288 observations in the data frame. But if we open that up, you can just see that data frame has one column called data, and there's still all these list objects inside that column. So we now need to work on extracting those list objects 
from that column. When you see lists and data frames, think of nesting and think of the tools that we can use to get them out of those nested situations. And one of the great tools for doing that is in the tidyr library, which has the unnest family of functions. And we're going to use the unnest wider function in this case. If we apply that to our TBL object, it's going to pull everything out into a nice column called data. And each item in that column called data is still going to be a list, but it's a lot closer than it was. So let's go back here and see what that does. I'm going to go to the tidyr library and use that unless wider function. I'm going to run that. And you can see now it's taken every list column that it can and converted it into its class. So you can see that timestamp function is now a nice character column, which looks like it has date times in. The score list has now been pulled up into a column of class double. We still have these two columns which have lists in and lists inside those lists. So there's a little bit of work to do to extract the information out of those two columns. So to start off with, let's just take a look at one of those listed columns and see what's in there. So I'm just going to use our kind of base file nomenclature here to operate on the unnested object, the dollar sign I'm just going to use to look at the centers column and I'm going to have to use the double square brackets because it's a list to look inside one of those cells. If I do that, I see inside each cell it's quite a lot of information. So let's go across and see what that looks like in our, our studio session. So we can see in each of those cells that we have is something called comp and something called value. And you can see they kind of pair up with each other. There's a temperature, a value for the temperature, a humidity, a value for the humidity. And so we need to think about some ways of extracting that information from that little nested list. And when we see lists of lists or a column that's in list column format, think about trying to use some of those map functions that we've been using to extract the values from the data frame. In this situation, we're going to use the map underscore df function. And we're going to use that to map the extract function to pull out those comp and value columns from that list into something usable, which in our case is a nice data frame. So let's run that code. can see if we run this now, we're left with a nice data frame. It has a column called comp, a column called value. The comp has which sensor it is, whether it's temperature, humidity, CO2, etc. And what the corresponding value is, is a nicely formatted double. The problem is we still have 288 of these little tables nested in our data frame. So we need to pull those out of there. And to do that, we can use our map function again, but this time, because we have a list within a list, we can actually use the map function twice within itself to extract the data. Again, it's a lot easier to understand if you just look at the example here. So I'm going to go and take that unnested object, paste that into my console, and run that function. And it should result in an object called list of table. And take a look at this one now. And you can see that it's pulled those two objects into something a little bit more usable, which is this data frame column, which contains two variables now, which look exactly like the little table that we pulled out using our map underscore df function. 
which is the comp and value columns. So our one final step here now is just going to be pulling those values out of that df column. And we can do that using the unnest function. So when you've got a list column that you want to flatten back into the data frame format, you can all, always worth a try using that unnest function. So we're going to take our object with that list of data frames in, remove the columns that we don't need anymore, so these sensors and indices columns that we still have those nested lists in we aren't interested in, and just apply the unnested function to that data frame object to pull those values out of there. So let's run that code now. And there we have it. We have a nice data frame. It has timestamps, it has scores, and it has a column for the which sensor it is and what the value that that sensor gives us. No lists anymore, just a nice flat data frame. What you might want to do is convert this into a wider data frame where you have a column for each sensor. We can use the pivot wider function to do that. Let's run that code. And now you can see something that looks a lot more user friendly. You have a timestamp and columns for each of the sensors, a score, a temperature, humidity and a CO2 value. And just to prove to you that it all does make some sense, I'm just going to fix up those timestamps, convert them into a nice date time object that I will understand, and make a nice plot of the data. To make a nice faceted plot, what we want to do is just kind of pivot that back into a longer format. We can then use ggplot on that data object, we can plot the time on the x-axis, our values on the y-axis, we can make each variable a different color, we can add some geomes, we're going to add the point and a line, we're going to make a nice clean theme to add on there, and we're going to facet it by each of the sensors, so each sensor, temperature, humidity, and so on will appear in its own facet. We're going to have one column per facet, we're going to Freed up those y, y scales because those different sensors have very different absolute values in them. I'm just going to move the legend position out of there because it's kind of self explanatory. And again, I'm going to remove the x label because that's self explanatory, and the y axis label appears in the header for the facet, so we don't need to do that. So if we do that, you can see that we've finally converted this really horrible, deeply nested object into some nice time series data that we can plot up nice and easily.